Jacob first saw the Shadow Man when he was eight years old, and from that moment, his life was never the same. It happened late one night, long after his parents had gone to bed. He had slipped out of bed, sneaking downstairs for a drink of water. The house was silent, the kind of stillness that makes every small sound echo, and the only light came from the moon, filtering through the living room window. As Jacob padded softly down the hallway, something in the far corner of the room caught his eye. A man stood there, unnaturally still. Jacob froze mid-step, his breath catching in his throat. The figure was tall, too tall, and his limbs seemed too long, like something barely human, stretched out to fit a human shape. His face was hidden in shadow, and even though Jacob couldn't see his eyes, he knew the figure was watching him. There was something wrong about the man, something that made Jacob's skin crawl. The figure seemed to absorb the light around him, casting no shadow of his own, and the air felt heavy, thick with something Jacob didn't understand, but instinctively feared. For a long moment, neither of them moved. Jacob stood rooted to the spot, his heart pounding in his chest. While the figure remained perfectly still, like a statue carved from darkness itself. He blinked once, and the man was gone. Shaken, Jacob ran back to his room, pulling the covers over his head and telling himself that it was just his imagination. But even as he tried to convince himself that the shadow man wasn't real, he knew deep down that something had changed that night. He never told his parents, never told anyone, but he could feel the presence of the man lurking in the corners of his life, always just out of sight, always watching. Years passed, and Jacob learned to ignore the brief glimpses he caught of the shadow man. He would see him reflected in the glass of a window or in the flicker of a streetlight at dusk, always watching, always waiting. The figure never moved, never spoke, but Jacob could feel the weight of his gaze wherever he went. It wasn't until Jacob turned 24 that things began to shift. By then, he had become accustomed to the eerie presence, so much so that it had become a part of his life, something that he tolerated like a permanent shadow. But the sightings became more frequent. The shadow man was no longer content to linger in the edges of his vision. He began appearing more directly. One evening, after a particularly long day at work, Jacob was sitting in his apartment, watching TV, when he felt it, a cold, prickling sensation creeping up the back of his neck. He knew what it was before he even turned around. Slowly, his breath shallow, he glanced over his shoulder. The shadow man stood in the corner of the room. This time, the figure was closer than he had ever been before, just a few feet away, moving in the darkened corner of the living room. Jacob could make out the faint outlines of a face. No eyes, no features, just a blank, expressionless void where a human face should have been. His heart raced a wave of nausea washing over him as he stared at the figure. The figure remained motionless, silent as ever, but this time was different. This time, Jacob could feel something pulling at him, a weight pressing down on his chest, making it hard to breathe. The air around him felt thicker, colder, like the very room was suffocating him. Without thinking, Jacob leaped from the couch and ran for the door, his panic rising with each step. He didn't look back as he grabbed his keys and fled the apartment, his pulse pounding in his ears. When he finally stopped running, he was standing outside, breathless and trembling, the cold night air biting at his skin. He had no idea where he was going, he just knew that he had to get away from that thing, from the shadow man. But no matter how far Jacob ran, he couldn't escape the feeling that he was being followed. The presence of the shadow man clung to him, like a stain that couldn't be washed away. Every time he stopped, every time he turned a corner, he expected to see the figure waiting for him, and he was always there. Weeks passed, and Jacob's life spiraled into paranoia. He avoided mirrors, refused to turn off the lights, and barely slept. Every night, he would lie in bed, eyes wide open, waiting for the inevitable moment when the shadow man would appear at the foot of his bed. But the more he tried to run from the figure, the closer it seemed to get. One night, Exhausted and terrified, Jacob made the mistake of confronting him. It was nearly 3 a.m. when Jacob woke to the sound of his apartment door creaking open. His heart dropped as he realized what was happening. Slowly, the door swung wide, 
And there, standing in the hallway, was the shadow man. He was no longer just a distant figure lingering in the corners. He was here, in Jacob's home, stepping slowly, deliberately toward him. Jacob sat up in bed, his entire body trembling. What do you want from me? He shouted, his voice cracking. The figure stopped at the edge of the bed, towering over him, its form impossibly dark. For the first time, it moved. Slowly, it bent down, bringing its featureless face inches from Jacob's. Cold air swirled around him, and for a moment, Jacob thought he heard something, a whisper, faint and far away, like wind rushing through a distant cave. Then the shadow man straightened up and turned away, fading into the darkness once more. Jacob sat there, frozen, the adrenaline still coursing through his veins, but the figure was gone, leaving behind only the crushing silence. He never saw the shadow man again after that night, but the fear never left him, because he knew the truth. Once the shadow man chooses you, you're never truly free. You may not see him again, but you'll always know he's there, lurking just beyond the edge of the light, waiting for the moment you forget, and he'll return when you least expect it.